The Australian golfer Peter Thompson, a five times Open champion, seemed to sum up many golfers' opinion of Ben Hogan when he stated in 1986 interview for Golf Digest that Ben Hogan was our ideal. He set a standard to which we all aspired and none of us reached. In his career, Ben Hogan won 68 professional golf tournaments between 1940 and 1959, which included missing several years of competition due to serving in the army during the Second World War. And while most high-profile pro golfers continued to play the tour as they got older, Hogan had virtually stopped playing full-time professional golf in the late 1950s, when he was still only in his mid-40s. He would instead concentrate on his own golf company, founded in 1953. Hogan's withdrawal from a full-time playing career was partly due to the range of injuries he had sustained in a car crash in 1949, an accident which threatened to end Hogan's life and his golf career at the time. Hogan's recovery inspired many people, and whereas previously he had been regarded by some as just a machine-like player, following his recovery and return to golf, his determination and inspirational play now resonated with a much larger audience. For myself, as a young golfer taking up the game in the mid-1980s, I first read about the life of Ben Hogan when I read the book The Masters of Golf by Dick Altman and Ken Bowden. The book covered all the greatest golfers in the game at the time, and it was clear that even Jack Nicklaus, rated by many as the best golfer ever, regarded Hogan as the best striker and best shot maker in the history of the game. Over here in Europe, where Hogan had only appeared a handful of times, the professionals and writers who had seen Hogan first hand regarded him as an almost mythic figure, a view that was enhanced by a beautiful book published in 1994 called The Hogan Mystique, which featured wonderful photographs of Hogan taken by the American photographer Jules Alexander. Jules' photographs of Hogan were taken at several events in the late 50s and early 60s. In the early 1990s, as someone whose background was in art, I wanted to create a range of golf sequence paintings and also some sculptures that would help me understand the golf swings of the best players and that also celebrated my interest in the visual side of golf. Ben Hogan was one of the first golfers I thought of when planning to create the range of paintings, but in the early 1990s there was actually quite limited photography and video of Hogan to work from. The main reference on Ben Hogan was of course his Modern Fundamentals of Golf book that was originally published as a series of articles in Sports Illustrated and then published as a book in 1957. The book is beautifully illustrated by Tony Ravelli, and even today is probably the best-selling instruction book in golf. Officially, the book is best known for, for Ravelli's inspirational drawing of Hogan at the top of his backswing with a plane of glass going through his shoulders. My preferred book is Hogan's first book, Power Golf, published in 1949. The swing that's in these photographs is Ben Hogan's swing prior to his crash in 1949, so it would have been taken about 1948. The photographs were taken at Augusta National Club on the practice ground there. You can decide for yourself from these images what Hogan was doing, but uh, perhaps my favourite sequence is this one of him hitting a long iron. These impact positions can't be better to even today. A lesson for us all. Gene Gregston wrote The Man Who Played For Glory, a good... In Europe we had magazines like Golf World. This edition in 1986 featured photographs of Hogan hitting balls when he's in his 70s. He's hitting a long iron here. Beautiful photographs, even into his 70s. This article was um, done in celebration of an expected new version of the Five Fundamentals coming out. Also in the UK we had this supplement which came with Golf Monthly. Um, some nice sequence of, of Hogan hitting a driver from first in one of the majors. And Golf Weekly which has since gone out of print. In 1992 they printed a very nice profile of Hogan at 80 some nice photographs. 
a lot of videos came out that had the same sequences in them. Uh, Follow the Sun, of course, 1950 film, Hogan's Life. Heroes of the Game from the USGA was probably the best video that you could find. It had a 20 minute segment on Hogan, very nice. And there was a limited edition, Hard Case from Texas. A source for um, photographs that, that I used a lot was um, Henry Cotton. Henry Cotton was uh, a great teacher himself, as well as a fantastic player. He won the Open three times. Um, as an example of one of his books, This Game of Golf, printed in 1948, Henry Cotton actually used to take a lot of photographs himself. In fact, he was one of the first pros, teaching pros, who used a 50 frames per second camera. Now Hogan would would practice um, in the States in the winter time in Miami Springs, Indian Creek, and Cotton would often go over there to to prepare for the season at the same time. So Cotton would take photographs of Hogan and took some lovely photographs which you can see in that book. Louis T. Stanley is somebody that, that I knew as a golf photographer, but in fact many people will know him better as um, the chairman of Formula One team, BRM. Louis T. Stanley published a lot of golf books in the 1950s and 1960s and took a lot of really good photographs. Now you won't find a lot of these photographs on places like Getty Images. Ben Hogan only played the Open once in 1953 at Carnoustie. Hogan won both the US Masters and the US Open in 1953 and had already promised his wife Valerie that if he won the US Open he would enter the British Open that year. One reason Hogan played in the Open this year was that the centre bladed putter that he used was allowed by the RNA. Hogan also used a smaller 1.62 inch golf ball for Carnoustie and found that the ball travelled further. He also found that he had to adjust his strike on the turf through impact as the harder ground would jar his wrists. Ben Hogan and Valerie would fly to Presswick, drive across Scotland and stay for three weeks returning by ocean liner taking in Paris on their return trip. The length of the trip back also excluded Hogan from returning in time to play the USPGA that year. The pathy newsreel footage of Hogan hitting a drive at Carnoustie shown here was the biggest influence in my sequence painting of Hogan. There are two versions of this painting, one which is now owned by the Thomas and Peters Company and a second version of the painting which I painted when I moved to Wales in 2002. A limited edition print of the first version of the painting was produced and I know that copies of this are owned by people such as Luther Blacklock, Gary Player and Tony Jacklin. The painting is acrylic on canvas, 36 by 24 inches. I decided to just do three figures as that's the simplest form of the golf swing. A few things to note about the figures. On the left hand side you can just see Hogan's head moving to the, to the right as he starts his takeaway. Fast transition at the top of the backswing that Hogan had because he had a very fast swing. And in the second version there's more crowd behind the three figures whereas in the first version of the painting you can't see any crowd. Sometimes the reference material I work from encourages a more finished look to a painting. Golf artwork with the more finished look though can take away from suggested movement of a golfer's swing. So the brushwork's left a bit more open in this. Ben Hogan had surgery for colon cancer in 1995 and also battled Alzheimer's disease and he finally passed away aged 84 in July 1997.
Golf Digest in the United States ran an obituary issue in October and amongst contributions reprinted the images of Hogan hitting iron shots and had an excellent obituary by Dan Jenkins. My Ben Hogan painting at Carnoustie was also featured so I was very honoured to be part of the magazine. After the Hogan at Carnoustie painting I continued to make studies of Ben Hogan such as this one, a reimagining of the plane of glass top of the backswing idea as an update to follow up to Tony Ravielli's classic illustration from the Hogan book Five Fundamentals originally published in 1957. This illustration is actually acrylic paint on card. I've always loved making sculptures so after the drawings and painting of Hogan at Carnoustie I started working on some sculptures of Hogan. Here's one that I produced in the mid 1990s. There are only two versions of this made. One went to a collector in the States and one went to a collector in Germany. This is modelled on Hogan's early downswing position with a long iron. Unfortunately, as I don't have the original of this, I only have uh, still images, so I can't show you any video of the sculpture. It's a synthetic clay sculpture and finished off in acrylic paint. When I created this figure, the sculpture should actually stand on its own merit without the base, so the base is just there to finish off the sculpture. Part of the reason that I work from so many references is that if you're making a sculpture of a, a golfer, the more references you have, the more accurate you can make the, the sculpture. And it's a shame, perhaps, that there's not more high-speed footage of Hogan hitting balls. Since the mid-1990s, there have been a follow-up to the book The Hogan Mystique and a couple more biographies of Hogan, plus some videos. So. There's more reference material on Hogan now than ever before, even though we haven't got more high-speed photographs of him. This is another sculpture I've made of Hogan. In fact, um, the original is now with Thomson Peters and has been used as the basis for a trophy for the British Par 3 Championship. This version is a, a resin cast and is actually painted in acrylic as per the previous model. Because this sculpture is based on Hogan at the end of the follow through with an iron and he's looking directly down the target it's a lot easier to sculpt his face clearly so this is one of the benefits of, of doing a, a follow through position when the sculpture turns fully around you can actually see there's a lot more work gone into the portrait of Ben and um, I'm fairly happy with this one to be fair and finally here's a colour video of the same sculpture as it's nice to see Ben in colour after only seeing him via black and white footage In the mid-1990s, when Ben Hogan was still alive, I did send a letter and a small collection of slides of my Hogan artwork to him in Fort Worth. Unfortunately, I never had a reply, and as he died in 1997, I'll never know if Ben saw this artwork. Ben Hogan has left a big legacy to golf. He is admired today as one of the game's greatest strikers of the ball, 
with a number of undisclosed secrets that many golfers are still searching for. More importantly, he is remembered not only for his outstanding play, but in his determination to succeed and overcoming great odds. I'd certainly like to think that my artwork celebrates the life of Ben Hogan in some small way. If you'd like to see more of my artwork, please go to my website at michaelfield.net. And in the meantime, thanks for watching this video.